we have to have enough to cover all eight shadings here. So every hole we have is one, two, we have three holes that are kind of three pieces each, and we're going to shade eight of these pieces. So that's all of these, that's all of these, and that's all of them. Look at them. All of one. Yeah, two of those. How about the five fourths? How many pieces do we cut that into? Two. Hopefully four. Four pieces there. Two holes though, yeah, you're right. Four pieces there. We're gonna shade five out of those pieces. We shade all four of these. We have that we had to have one more hole to cover this last piece that we weren't able to get to with this four. So we have four out of four here, and we have one out of four there. That's giving us our five out of four. In fact, if you were to draw pictures, you can actually add fractions this way. And lastly, we have something with seven pieces. Shade all of it. That's right. All seven out of seven. We shade the entire thing. Seven out of seven is one. How many people had a pretty good idea about these pictures, these fractions? Do you feel okay with your introduction to fractions? Yeah. Next time we're going to start talking about mixed numbers and proper fractions, and then we'll get on to simplification. That'll be on Monday. So what are these things, mixed numbers, and what are these things compared to improper fractions? We're going to draw one more picture of a fraction, which we uh, kind of did this last time. But it will lead us into how to find out the similarities between these things. So let's look at a mixed number. When I say a mixed number or a mixed number fraction, what we mean is some value that's greater than 1. It's definitely greater than 1. And it also has a whole number and a fraction part. Let me give you an example here about what I'm talking about. Do I have more than one? Yes. How many holes do I have, as a matter of fact? Two. Two. Do I have anything more than two? No, one Sure, how do we find out one half? What tells you one half up here? Okay, so it's cut into two pieces. That means our denominator is two, and only one of them is shaded. That's how we're getting the one half. Are you all okay on getting that this is two and a half? Two holes and one half. Great, okay. So that's two and a half, that's a mixed number. It's more than one, definitely more than one. It's got a whole number part, that's our two, and it also has our fraction part, that's our one half. However, could you also represent this as an improper fraction? Yes. Yeah. Okay, remember improper fractions, the numerator was larger than the, de the denominator, but the denominator still stood for how many parts each hole is cut into. How many parts are these cut into? Yeah. So this is going to be something over 2, do you agree? Yes. Five. Five. Why 5? Because 2 times 2. Okay, so we don't do this, right? We don't go, oh, there's 1, 2, 3 pieces shaded. What we're doing is counting each little part that's shaded. So 1, 2, 3, 4, there's 5 pieces that's shaded. And each one is cut into 2 pieces. 2, 2, 2. That's where we're getting the denominator of 2. Are you okay that this is going to be 5 halves? Yeah. Well, here's what we did. We took the same picture. And we found out two different ways to identify that. This was two and a half, but this is also five halves, right? So what that means to me is that five halves and two and a half represent exactly the same thing. So here, we know that five halves equals two and a half. Is there a way mathematically that we can get from one to the other? 
Yeah, in fact, if we look at that, we know that 5 halves means 5 divided by 2, right? Well, let's set that up. Let's do 5 divided by 2. If I set up my division symbol, can you tell me what number should go on the inside of my division symbol? Five. Five. Good, the number on the top. Not necessarily because it's bigger, but because that's on the top. That's on our numerator. Five. Okay, cool. And on the outside, we're going to put our 2. Can you tell me how many times 2 goes into 5? 2. We multiply, we get our 4. We subtract, we get our 1. Then here's what we do with that 1. Now that we're in fraction world, right? We were in just regular old uh, remainder rule, remainder world over there in our first couple chapters. Right now we're past that. We're now into fractions. Here's how you represent that 1. 2, that stands for your whole number. We've got 2 times that 2 goes into 5 without going over. This remainder of 1, here's how you represent that from now on. We're going to take that 1, and we're going to say that we couldn't really make up another whole out of that. We couldn't divide another 2 into that, but we still have, know that that 1 is being divided by 2. So we take that remainder, we put it on top of whatever you divided by, and that's the way we can change an improper fraction into a mixed number. We're not to decimals right now. We're dealing just with fractions. Good. Just with fractions right now. Let's try a few more together. So we're going to try to change 7 thirds into a mixed number. What number goes on the inside of our division sign, please? Seven. Seven. Cool, and three goes on the outside. How many times does three go into seven without going over? So when we multiply, we'll get six. When we subtract, we get one. And what is the fraction part of my mixed number here? Two. Wait, no, I have two already. What's the third? third. So I'm going to take this one as my remainder, put it there, over whatever I just divided by, three. So what this tells me is that seven thirds is the same thing as two and one third. We can go from our improper fraction to a mixed number. We'll try a couple more together. We'll go talk about going backwards and then I'll have you do some on your own. Let's try 15 fourths. 15 fourths. So on the inside of our division symbol we'll put our 15 and we're dividing by 4. So the fraction tells us what to put where. Our numerator goes on the inside of our division symbol. Our denominator goes on the outside of our, our divisor. So we're dividing inwards, taking 4 into 15 how many times? 3. Three. Good. We do the same process. We're going to have 3. We'll still multiply, get our 12. We'll still subtract. How much will we get? 3 4. 3, why over 4? That's what we check for. So whatever we're dividing by, that's going to be our denominator no matter what. So our denominator is 4 here. It's a way to check your answer. You should get, well, the whole number goes for sure, and our remainder goes here for sure. Our denominator will not change. So it's, if it's over 4 here, it will be over 4 there. That won't change. So 3 and 3 fourths, that's it. So 11 thirds. On the inside we'll put our 11. On the outside we'll put our 3. How many times does 3 go into 11 without going over? 9. Three. I mean 3. Yeah. Gives you 9 though. Nine. We subtract, we get our 2. We can't go any further since we have our 2 that's less than 3. We're going to make that our remainder. We put that as our numerator. We put it over 3 and we're done. How many will feel okay about changing those things? Mm -hmm. Now the question is, can you go backwards? Yeah. You're backwards. So 4 and 5, 6. Can we change that, a mixed number, where the whole number is 4 and the fraction part is 5, 6, can we change that into an improper fraction? Yes. Yeah. It is. Well, you know what? We're going to go exactly the opposite of what we just did. Over here, we divide it, then we subtract it. We're going to go in complete reverse order. We're going to multiply and add. Multiply and add. Yeah, so if we divide it and subtract it, we're now going to multiply and add. 
But what do we multiply by? Six and four plus two. And then add five. Cool. That's exactly right. So <coughs> we're going to multiply these two things. And then you're going to add these two. So we'll do our four times our six. We take our denominator times our whole number. In this case, we're going to get how much? 24. 29 plus 5. 24, yes, and then we add the, nine, the 5, so we get the 29. Yeah, I told you the denominator doesn't change, right? So if we have a denominator of 6 here, we're going to end with the denominator of 6 here. Can you always check your work? Yes. Yeah, and matter of fact, here, you, if you did 3 times 3, that's 9, plus 2 is 11, we'd get 11 thirds. You can always go back and forth and check your work. That's kind of nice. You can always make sure you have this right. Okay, at this point, I'm going to give you something to do on your own. If I give you a mixed number, I want you to change it to a proper. If I give you an improper, I want you to change it to a mixed number. Fifteen over four is considered improper, yes. Improper? Improper. Doesn't mean it's wrong. We, we still write fractions like that all the time. It's okay. just the name that we give three it. Three and three fourths would be considered proper. No, three and three fourths would be considered a mixed number. So go ahead and change these things. If it's a mixed number, make it improper. If it's improper, make it a mixed number. By the way, before you get to your homework, I'd like you to read this section, 4.1. I've given you most of the, the problems that you'll be getting, uh, but you do need to read that section. There's some things that I have not gone over. Uh, there's some, I believe, some graphs in there, some other things that are, are very pertinent to this class that you will need to read. So make sure you do that. Read what? 4.1. 4.1? Right. Just the section before you start your homework, OK? Make sure you look that over. Okay, let's get started on this thing. So, first one. On the first example, I've given you already a mixed number. What I'm asking you for is to take that and change it back into an improper. We're going to have to do this in our class a lot, change things back into improper to work with them. What do I need to do to change 12 and 5 eighths into an improper fraction, ladies and gentlemen? Multiply 5 and 8. So 12 times 8, 12 times 